One of my favorite tools inside of All One Photo Raw is the bleach bypass filter. Today, we're gonna to take a look at how you can apply this to your images and get instant contrast and image pop using this particular tool. Let's jump into the computer. Here we are inside of All One Photo Raw, and as usual, if you wanna download this particular image, you can do so using the link in the description box below. You can also use the coupon code FREEWILL10 to save a little bit of money if you wanna pre-order On One Photo Raw 2026. It is an affiliate coupon, which just means I make a small commission from anyone who uses it, but I greatly appreciate everyone who does. Now, here we are with an image that I've already applied just a little bit of Bruins AI, and I've flattened out a lot of the contrast in the photo because I wanna really highlight what the bleach bypass does for the image. So we're gonna go ahead and minimize the tone and color inside of develop, jump over to the effects module, and we're gonna hit add filter. And then I'm gonna ho hover over the bleach bypass for just a second and read this description of what it actually says that it does. Um, this filter is based upon the old color film processing technique where the bleaching step was skipped. It reduces the saturation and increases the contrast. It is a popular look in the cinema. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and apply it and then we'll kind of talk through it. So let me minimize the main section there. When I turn this off and turn on, you can see it just instantly applies contrast to the photo and makes it look, in my opinion, five times better, but we can do a little bit more. So the first section here is the opacity and the second one is styles. We'll come back to styles because I do want to show you that a little bit, but the main section is going to be this bleach bypass section. And then we also have a tint section. Now I'm going to just jump right into the bleach bypass section because I think that this is where you're going to spend the bulk of your time trying to modify this particular filter. And this is a really easy filter to use, which is why I love it. I love simple tools that gets me the look that I want. So first, tool or first slider that you have available to you is the amount slider. Then you come down to brightness, contrast, detail, and saturation, and they do exactly what you would think that each of these would do. Now, I usually play the amount slider further to the right, uh, somewhere between 80 and 100, depending on what type of contrast I'm trying to apply, how much of it I'm trying to apply. But for right now, we'll just leave it at 83. I think that that's going to do us some good. Then you have the brightness slider. And this does exactly what you would think. If you pull it to the right, it's going to brighten things up. Yeah, it doesn't look that great. But if you pull it to the left, it's going to darken things down. And based off of what type of image you're working on, for me, I'm working on an image that's pretty well lit. You may not need to do a whole lot with this slider. So I would recommend leaving that slider untouched for a little while. And then you jump into these three sliders down here, which is contrast, detail, and saturation. Because this is where I think the look is really going to be developed. Uh, contrast, if you pull it to the right, it's going to increase the contrast. And all that really means is it's gonna take the dark stuff in the image and make it darker. And then it's gonna take the bright stuff in the image and make it brighter. So that way, if your contrast slider is here, and then it just starts to spread out as you pull that contrast slider to the right. But if you pull it to the left, it's gonna start flattening out that contrast. So if it's if you have a lot of contrast in your image and then you pull it to the left to shrink the contrast, it's bringing everything closer to middle gray. Now, not completely ideal because I like to make my images pop with contrast when I use this tool. So I typically move this slider to the right and I push it pretty good. I'm not afraid of making this tool work really hard. And the reason for that, I can always tame it with the opacity slider. That's why I crank the amount all the way up and I just get something that I, I'm like, yeah, that looks great, okay? Um, but then you come down to the detail slider. Now, I usually don't mess with the detail slider all that much. On an image like this, I probably wouldn't, except for 
when we do a trick that I'm going to show you here in a second. Uh, so we'll leave detail alone, but if you pull it to the right, it will increase the detail and you can see what that's doing to the image. Doesn't look the greatest on the background at least. And then if you pull it to the left, you can see what it does to the image overall. Double click in the node will reset it. Now, the last one is saturation. And for this image, it is a little under saturated. And if this were the only filter that I was applying to the photo, then I would definitely play around with the saturation here. And for today's purposes, since this is the only filter, I'm just gonna increase the saturation because I feel like this image could use a little bit more saturation overall. Then we have the tint section. Now. I don't use this section pretty much ever. Uh, it, it usually just stays minimized for me or collapsed because I don't need it. I don't really care to use it. However, what it does is it allows you to throw some color into the image. And for this image, it probably wouldn't hurt to have a little bit more of a warmer color added into the image. So maybe if we click that little box, it'll give us our color uh, swatch here and maybe I'll go with something a little gold. Now, what I would love to be able to do is kind of do a before and after. And the only way that you can get a before and after with the tint is by turning the amount all the way down and then pulling it back up and then pulling it back down. But I think for this image, it doesn't hurt to have it around 13. All right. Now, I told you that we were going to come back to styles here in a second. And the reason for that is I want to create a style, which, again, is just a preset for a specific effect. And it comes with its own built in presets or styles from on one. But I have my own styles here and you can see I have a crisp grunge one, which doesn't work so well for this image. Uh, dark, cool movie. I think I actually did use a tint option on that one. And then dark, warm movie, same thing. And then I have some monochrome ones where uh, it doesn't look like they're actually working on this image the way that I've probably created them. And then we have the ones that on one actually developed. But I like the style that I created. And just like any other filter inside of on one, what you can do with your um, images here or with your filters is you can create your own style like I have up here at the top. So I'm going to click on save new style. And what it's going to do is just save those settings. Now, what I need to do is give this a name and we'll just call this FWP animal. And I'll hit enter to save it. And now when I hit this drop down, you'll notice that I have FWP animal and it's selected. Now you're probably wondering like, well, Chris, why the heck did you create that? Well, the reason I created this style is because I need to, as of right now, on one doesn't have a way of copying and pasting effects. I wish they would just allow you to do that, but they don't. So what I need to do is create another instance of the bleach bypass filter. So I'm going to click add filter and then I'm going to click on bleach bypass. So now I have a double whammy of this, so to speak. But what I'm going to do is I am going to click on my bottom one. So we'll just call this uh, bypass or yeah, we'll call this bypass. Whoop. Yeah, we'll just leave it bypass and then we'll just make this one bypass too. Just to make sure that we, um, or you know what? We'll call this bypass animal. And it'll make sense here in a second. All right. So what I'm going to do is click on styles, hit this drop down, and then I'm going to apply FWP animal to this one again. So now essentially I have double the exact same uh, bleach bypass style added to the image. But what I want to do is remove it from the animal on the bottom one. So I'm just going to click on the bottom one, select the mask, press the letter W on my keyboard to get my favorite tool of all on one, which is the AI quick mask brush. Let it read the image here. 
and then it's going to give me some crosshairs and look at that it selects the animal here quite well so we'll just get all of the animal and it's not going to have to be perfect or it doesn't have to be perfect um, and then I want to erase it from the animal on the bottom one. So erase is already selected. And then I'm just going to hit the blue check mark and we'll see that I've only applied the look to the background. So now I'm going to copy this mask and then come over here, right click and paste the mask again. And this time, instead of it being uh, on just the background, I'm going to right click this and invert it. So that way this applies to just the animal. And so what I can do now, because earlier, remember I didn't mess with the detail slider on the initial bypass filter that we added. I left it alone. But now what I can do is come back and increase the detail and I'm only applying it to the animal. So I can really get a little bit more fidelity and granularity, if you will, over the animal. But what I can also do is come back to the bypass for the background, which is essentially what it is now. And I can come into the tint and maybe I want the background to be a little bit warmer. So I can just pull that up and look at that. In one filter, I was able to get a lot of color, a lot of contrast, a lot of punch, and this is what it looked like before, and this is what it looks like after the bleach bypass. Now, this filter goes beyond what I'm just showing here today. This is really more of an introduction of what it can do. So I highly recommend that everyone goes and gives this a try. Just test it out on your own images, play around with it. If you don't like it, you can delete it. You're not gonna hurt anything. Now, if you found value, smash the like button. If you want more content like this, consider hitting that subscribe button because I do post a lot of stuff about On One Footer Raw here on the channel. Now, of course, if you want to learn how to use On One Footer Raw, there's two options that I recommend to you. The first one is to sign up for a training call with me. A link for that is found in the description box below. The second method is to sign up for my On One course. It's hosted on my website. It's a one-time payment and you get access to all of the training material that I've already uploaded and the new material that I'm going to be uploading when the 2026 version is released. Now, I want to be very clear, the current version of the basics course is using an older version of On One Photo Raw. However, all of the techniques are still the same for the most part. There are some nuances and some differences, but I do have a lot of videos here on the channel that cover the gaps. And once I have the 2026 version in my hands, I am going to create a complete course with just the 2026 version. So that way it'll be updated. And if you sign up now, you will get that free of charge and all of the future updates that I apply to the course. All right. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you would like to save some money when you pre-order on One Photo Raw 2026, consider using the coupon code FREEWILL10. All right. You'll save some money with the pre-order pricing of On One Photo Raw when you use that code. And I make a small commission from everyone who uses it, but that's at no extra charge to you. So with all that out of the way, I hope you found this video helpful and I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.